It's Kate and Oliver Hudson. Hudson. <laughs> Host of the new podcast, Sibling, Sibling Revelry. Revelry. That's right. We started this show because, you know what? No one talks about siblings and that dynamic. The siblings, they know each other better than anybody. Yes. You know. Listen to Sibling Revelry on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. I'm Jacob Goldstein. I used to host Planet Money. Now I'm starting a new show. It's called What's Your Problem? Every week on What's Your Problem, entrepreneurs and engineers describe the future they're going to build. Once they solve a few problems, I'm talking to people trying to figure out how to do things that no one on the planet knows how to do, from creating a drone delivery business to building a car that can truly drive itself. Listen to What's Your Problem on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcast. Episode 298, No Cost Ways to Be More Eco-Friendly. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast. My name is Jen. My name is Jill. And welcome to April. It is our annual sustainability eco-friendliness Episode. Oh, look at us. Yes. Look at you, really. You do the planting and I do. you thought ahead. Yes. April showers bring May flowers and eco-sustainability thoughts and provisions. Yes. Since Earth Day is April 20th, I think. 22nd. Sorry. <laughs> it's a different holiday. <laughs> we decided to just do our sustainability episode on the first episode of April. So you can prepare for 420. <laughs> Two. <laughs> 422. <laughs> Anyways, sorry. <laughs> we are excited. We we talked we've talked a lot about different ways to be frugal and sustainable. Because those two ideas don't always align when you're being marketed to. But in reality, Mm -hmm. they do align very well. So well. I don't know why we have to keep saying how well Mm -hmm. they align. So, but we were here for it. Yeah. Because it's more content. And we're just going to, yeah, we're just going to emphasize that a little bit more again today. Well, I I think it is another angle because Mm -hmm. you don't, There are things you can do that spend money, doesn't have to be a lot of money. And then there's things that we can do that is just not spending any money at all. And it's like a win, 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 win. And we love those. But first, this episode is brought to you by getting better. Kind of like when you're sick and getting better, only a little different and very different from the harsh exhortation of others to do better. Wow. This one's more about making small improvements day by day towards personal growth and having the ability to look back and say, I'm getting better. If this is something you want to say about your finances, you should definitely check out our spending makeover. It's a free three-day total makeover for your money and will help you get better with finances in so many different ways. And it's free. Frugalfriendspodcast.com slash makeover to check it out. Yeah. It's mostly for your spending. Like it's not going to help you with like your investing or your income or there you go one yeah, one it's gonna step be, yeah. towards getting better yeah one step we like to under promise and over deliver so i don't want you to promise too much jill <laughs> we like actually like I to under promise and, and under deliver but so true here we, here we are all right so in honor of this year's eco-friendly episode here are a few that we have done And we do more than one a year, but we definitely do one in April. So we have a few others. Episode 241 is about divesting. So it's about sustainable banking. So if you are using a big bank, I'll just let you know the big banks are Chase, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo. If you are using any of those, episode 241 is definitely for you. Episode 210, Tips to Live Zero Waste Frugally. That was last year's episode for April. And that is reducing your waste is really the best way to combine frugality and sustainability because it doesn't 
limit what you can own or buy or have. It's not deprivation, but it is literally a conscious effort to use what you have. Mm. Um, and so I think that's the best gateway into sustainability for a frugal mindset. So we love episode 210. And then episode 176 was a replay with uh, our interview with Debt Kick and Mom on zero waste-ish cooking. So it's zero waste, reducing waste specifically in the kitchen where the most waste is usually found in a home. So those are some of our favorite sustainability episodes. We've got a lot to work through this month. And there are more than just that. Mm -hmm. So when you listen to these other episodes, we'll do a recommendation in each of those two. So you'll get even more for the whole month. Just keep digging. Just keep digging. All right. So let's talk about no cost ways to be more eco friendly. We're splitting this into two parts as we normally do. The first is mindset shifts for sustainability, because we haven't really talked about that aspect mm-hmm. much. And then the second is some actual practical, no cost tips. Love it. This So the first article comes from the Family Footprint Project and is talking about, like Jen said, the mindset shifts for sustainable living. Another kind of area that is lesser talked about of what needs to happen in our thoughts and our mind before we're going to see the behavioral actions that follow. It always will begin first in our thoughts. But yet we just love to jump straight to the behaviors. It rarely works. So here we are with some of the mindsets. And the first one that they mention is imperfect action. Being willing to embrace and accept actions that are imperfect. And I so appreciate even just starting with this tip because I think anytime we talk about issues that we are facing in the world where there might be injustice or difficulty or a demand for doing better, (laughs) that there can be then this really unforgiving mantra surrounding it of you have to be doing all of the things and it needs to rise to the same level of importance as I'm feeling right now as I dedicate my life to this thing. And I mean, I love all the advocacy people out there, but sometimes, and I'm mostly like also talking about myself because I've been in the injustice world for a long time, it can be all consuming and we can demand so much. And then that can lead to people just not doing anything because it feels so overwhelming. It's like, I can't do that perfectly. I'm going to get yelled at. Ah, I don't even know if I want to touch it because it feels so volatile. But this this new movement and new wave that is far less shaming and just recognizing small steps towards getting better. It is going to be imperfect. What's important to you is not necessarily going to be the most important thing to me, but in each of our own ways, finding what can we do to be actively moving towards greater levels of sustainability that will benefit our environment, the world around us, other people, ourselves. You don't have to do it perfectly. Yeah, it is unfortunate that we live in a culture that loves to point out imperfection, whether it be in the past or the present. It just loves to call out others' imperfection, usually as a deflection from our own imperfection. And so there's always going to be people out there that do that. But know that if you're taking small steps, it doesn't matter what other people are saying you're going in the right direction. And you just have to have grace for people that might be judgmental and know that it comes out of their insecurity, not your lack of of trying and moving in the right direction. Yes. The next is conscious consumption. This is the thing says having no intention of moving off the grid and living solely off the land, which I'm sure would mean fostering out my children who would refuse to come with me. The author is definitely honest. 
She says, I'm faced with being a consumer, which we all are. We say this over and over again. You ha- you spend money. We spend money. We love spending money. Spending money is not the enemy. And in very much in frugality, spending money is seen as the enemy. What really is the enemy is the mindless consumption, the I mean, you are conscious if you're awake, but unconscious consumption. I like it. I like saying mindless, Mm -hmm. habitual, that type of consumption. That is the enemy. Actual consumption is not. So we want to move more towards intentional and, and conscious consumption of products. And so this article actually references the five R's that we talked about in last year's um, zero waste episode, which is refuse, reduce, reuse, rot, and recycle. And so we're very familiar with reduce, reuse, recycle. But in the zero waste world, first we refuse. And so that is refusing to bring things into your home that you do not need refusing to bring things in that are impulse purchases or even free things from your buy nothing group that you probably don't need, but are just taking for free. So that's the first one. And then it also adds rot uh, before recycle. So if you have, if you can compost to try to do that first, and then recycle is, is last. So being very aware of the things that you're bringing into your home and being very aware of the things you are spending your money on and the journey that they took to get there. Mm -hmm. That alone, um, just having that mindset is that I'm conscious of the journey that my item took to my home can really change a lot about how you buy things. Yeah. And this is a great concept for us just solely financially, but how much more so when we add on the layer of the benefit it has for the environment when we are more conscious consumers. So I love it when we can just like stacks on stacks on stacks, really solid reasons for like being mindful and good stewards. So there's just another one. And I love the additional R's, Mm -hmm. (laughs) refusing and rotting. Yes, That's perfect for me. The next one on this list is having this mindset that is more and more headed towards valuing secondhand. And I think a lot of people, if you do buy secondhand, might come at this concept for for a variety of reasons. Some people enter into the secondhand purchasing world purely to save some money. Others enter into it purely from a reducing waste perspective, but it it can serve all the purposes. And as we're able to add more value to that, then it won't just be this, oh, let me just see if I can do this to save money. Because the second we're not as concerned about spending less, then we might be buying new. And that's what the author gave as an example in their own lives of, yeah, they used secondhand and free, which is secondhand usually too, in their college days when they didn't have a lot of money. It was not only what's at the thrift store, but just what's on the side of the road, what's in someone's dumpster. But then the second they got a job, that wasn't needed anymore for their lifestyle. And so they were buying new. And so to keep us on this track of secondhand purchasing can come when we are then also concerned about reducing waste and consuming in a more kind of ethical, sustainable kind of way. So wherever we can, and that that goes along with the R's of reusing, repurposing, buying something that's already used. And I love how they say they realize that the second something is purchased or bought, it is now used. So mm-hmm. even, even if you are the one who purchased at noon, now that you've bought it, it's used. So that can be a helpful reframe. In, you know, if there are any barriers to buying used items, there can be some really amazing deals to be found and also keeping things out of the landfill. So I'm all about, and I'm here for secondhand, and that's your thrift stores, that's your buy nothing, that's your Facebook marketplace, that's your hand-me-down from friends, wherever you can get secondhand. 
do it. Yeah. And there's a radical middle to be found here, too. I, I talked to a mom once who was like, I can't buy my kids clothes secondhand because they go through them so fast. They're just so rough on their jeans. And that is very like that's an extreme thought is that I can't buy any of my kids' clothes secondhand because they are so rough on them. I have to buy them firsthand. But there is a there is a radical middle. So maybe your kid has 10 pairs of jeans. Five of them are new. Five of them are thrifted. They go through those five maybe faster than the new ones. But then maybe they can pass those new five down, those those ones that were newer, pass those down to the next kid, and then they get five more new ones. Or they just use out the thrifted ones faster, and by the time they're ready to move up in size, they are left with five pairs of jeans, you know? Alternatively, there's someone at the other end of that spectrum who has bought stuff that their kids never wore. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if you can't find things at the thrift store that aren't already tattered. There are plenty of things that you can buy pre-owned, but that doesn't always mean pre-used. That's so true. Yeah. So there is a radical middle to be had in second hand. You do not have to be all second hand or all new in anything. And I would just challenge you to explore how secondhand you can get in a, a reasonable like way that fits your lifestyle. Yeah. For me, I always buy my undies new. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're full support <laughs> of, new, of new underwear. <laughs> full support. If that was something, is that's a question you had for the frugal friends? We just want to, we just want to put that out there. Yeah. We are all you for- You can own your own. New they underwear. could be only be mm-hmm. used by you. Yes, absolutely. Um, so the next one is reevaluate assumptions, which is kind of what I was just talking about with the mindset of having to be all in secondhand or all out. Really reevaluate what you assume about your your footprint. So the author says, I've discovered assumptions that I held, which prevented me from taking certain actions. I touched on an assumption about buying new above. So it was a similar thing that I said. And it was just what I did. I didn't think about it. I just assumed that was what people, including me, did. So even if the people around you are doing things one way, We're here to tell you that there are people surely doing it another way. Um, And maybe they're doing it all the way, but you don't have to do that either. So it is difficult to uncover your underlying assumptions. The author does acknowledge that because you don't know what you don't know. And that's kind of one of the, the reasons we do this podcast is just to open up mindsets to like reveal things that you may not know. But go in baby steps. Go at a pace and change at a pace that is, no pun intended, sustainable and and doable for you. And always, if you have an like in your mind something that you're like, oh, I can only do this because of, and you've rationalized it out. If it's an absolute, challenge that. Mm. Challenge that mindset in yourself. If you have any absolute mindsets or thoughts, take a moment and just be like, okay, I assume this is 100%. Let me just live for a second if this wasn't 100%. What would it look like for that to, for this 100% mm. mindset to be untrue? And just think about how what that would look like. It's Challenge such a good it. exercise. It may not change everything entirely, but it's a good thing to to know that not everything has to be boxed in and it might lead you to a really creative solution. So this is this is great for mul- multiple reasons. Mm-hmm. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So, buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So, how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing, 
And of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less, like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic. oracle.com slash strategic. Discover the heartwarming and hilarious world of sibling connections on Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson. You might be asking yourself, what is sibling revelry? Yeah, well, we just made it up. They'll have some laughs and maybe inspire some people along the way with universal tales of what it's like to grow up with brothers and sisters. We're full blood siblings, the only full blood sibling. In our family. Well, not in the world. I mean, no, in the whole world. That's just it. Like, no one. (laughs) Dive into family tales and explore the human mind with guests like Joel and Benji Madden. And it's fun because we've decided to open it up, you know, to really like all kinds of different siblings. And it's going to be a, an awesome season. It's more than a podcast. It's a celebration of the ties that bind us. Listen to Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. The next article we want to go through now gives some actual tips of things that we can be implementing to aim at greater levels of sustainability in some no-cost ways. And it comes from Real Simple. The article is titled 10 Low-Cost and no cost ways to help the planet. This was in 2022, but we're just going to like move that over to also 2023. Yeah. They as just well. didn't update it. We will eat. We're not going to go through all 10. Both Jen and I are going to pick some of our favorites. And I will kick it off with one of my favorites, which is number one reduce food waste. And again, we reference that we did do an entire episode on this, episode 176, if you want to take an even deeper dive into what this could look like. But the article references that globally, we waste close to 40% of all the food that's produced, which is really wah, wah. That's so, so, so much food waste, uh, which then leads to all sorts of greenhouse gas emissions. And it's just, it's not great. It's a waste of money. It's a waste of food that could be sustaining us. And so wherever we can do our part, and I love the breaking it down into smaller and smaller steps. This is definitely something that every household can be implementing. It's not this big, massive overhaul of lifestyle. It's tweaking things here and there to make sure that we are only buying what we need, consuming what we've bought, being really wise and intentional with like even anything that's left over. And they, I love the tips that they give of some simple steps to be moving towards less food waste of taking the, that extra time to plan out your meals before you find yourself at the grocery store. I, I am definitely one who can think this is going to take way longer than it actually does, mm-hmm. but it truly only needs to take 10 minutes to sit down, look at your week and identify, okay, when will I be out this week? When will I be sharing a meal with friends? When will I be home? And what can the plan be? Then because you're at home, you can compare what you plan on making to what you already have in the fridge and pantry and really only buy what you need. Also making good use of your freezer. So if you've cooked extra and you know If I put this in a container in the fridge, it probably won't get eaten because we're going to be gone most of the rest of the week, then throw it in the freezer. I think that earlier on in my reducing food waste journey, this was one of like my biggest downfalls of thinking, okay, we'll just put it in the fridge and then a week would go by and there we go. We got to throw it out. And so realizing how better to utilize my freezer, which also plays into that earlier step of meal planning, planning stuff that is very freezable, knowing I'm going to have leftover. And that's just like a double whammy because then you've got food already prepared for your busy nights. And also recognizing the difference between expiration dates and best before dates. I think sometimes we can be 
overly cautious. I'm like treading very carefully here. But best before is not the same thing as expired. I'm not trying to tell you to like eat moldy or rancid things, but recognize that if something, yeah, that you just opened recently, but it, the best before date is past, it could still very well be that you can eat that thing. And to not let your desire to just purge and have a very clean looking fridge overtake the the necessity of reducing food waste. And if it is about to go bad, is there a way that you could cook that into a meal that quickly goes into the freezer or or something before it goes bad? Mm -hmm. Number two is to recycle smarter not harder. And I am reminded of this when I think back to our episode with Ron Gonan on the circular economy about like dream cycling. So don't throw something in the recycling bin just because you want it to be recyclable (laughs) to actually know what is recyclable. And it's different in many cities, even like communities within cities for some reason. So you should please, 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 please. It takes no extra cost. It is absolutely free to do a Google search on how to recycle. So just making sure things are clean. And if you, in all honesty, if you don't feel like cleaning it, if you don't have the time to throw it away, because if you put something into the recycling that will not be accepted, it could contaminate the entire bin and which in which case nothing, even recyclable items, nothing will get recycled in that bin. So please just be on the cautious side. Don't or wish, don't wish cycle. Please educate yourself on recycling, how clean certain things need to be, yada, yada, so that the things in your bin do actually get recycled. Mm -hmm. The next on here happens to be number three that I also love. Reduce, 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 (laughs) reduce, reduce. reduce. So yes, recycling is good, but reducing our waste is even better. And a lot of times in this article too, is specifically talking about those single use plastics. Oh, they're such a culprit and that just leads to an overwhelming amount of waste when we are only using something one time, just like the toll that that takes on all aspects of the the production and then the post-production mm-hmm. following the use. There's so much that can be said for just decreasing the amount of single-use plastics that we're relying upon in our daily lives. And usually that too just means a small, some, some small tweaks in various areas of life to identify where am I consuming the most plastics? Where am I utilizing these kind of single-use conveniences that with one small shift really could make a big impact, at least for my footprint. And and again, love the examples that they're giving here, which apply to most of us. We're talking about the plastic bags. And so a simple switch to taking your own bags with you to the grocery store and not relying upon the plastic bags that are just given and then who knows what to do with all of them afterwards. This is talking about eliminating those plastic bottle usages. Take your own reusable water bottle everywhere you go. If you're afraid of running out of water, get a bigger water bottle or take two medium-sized water bottles or three small water bottles. You get the point. And also considering those utensils. Another really common one is, you know, get getting the plastic utensils wherever you're going. Usually it's your fast food restaurants, but yeah, plenty of places just use utilizing plastic utensils. I, it sounds crazy, but I will carry around, like I will have my own utensils in my vehicle that I can reuse. So I don't need, if I am happening to find myself in a drive through or getting takeout, I don't need to take the plastic utensils from them. So keeping these types of things in mind, keeping your car stocked so you're prepared, so there's less opportunity for going for that convenience, one-time use plastics, and then just these other shifts. Again, I 
I would say we're not imperfect action. So don't focus on the things that only you're intersecting with like once a month. We want to look at how like the things you're using more regularly. Are there single use plastic items that you're using every single day? Start there. We want to look mm-hmm. for like the high impact items, not necessarily like the one time low impact. This is only happen. Hope happens once a month. Yeah. So the next one for me, I'm going to skip down to six and I'm just going to say it again because it's on the list. So I can opt for used items. So the amount of waste finding its way into landfills is a growing problem. And spoiler alert, you pay for landfills. So you may not, there are some communities that do make you pay for waste removal, which I love. Even if you are living in a community where that's just standard, you don't have the option to pay or not pay, you still, you pay for it. And as the need for landfills increases, that cost will go up and you you will pay for it. Your children will pay for it. Your, grand, your grandchildren will pay for it. So we really need to be opting for used items when it is possible. The average American produces about 1,704 pounds of garbage every year which is three times the global average. It is insane. So we need to start reducing our waste. Reduce, reduce, refuse, but also opting for used. And so, yes, to buy at a thrift store, that costs a little bit of money, which goes against the title of the article. But there are ways to get used things for free, too. Obviously, we talk about buy nothing groups a lot. But uh, if you are not on Facebook or don't want to babysit the buy nothing group, just in your like, look at your community and what are the things that you collectively own or individually own that you could collectively use. I think we've talked about our friend Joseph who has a pressure uh, pressure washer. washer. (laughs) He loves loves his pressure washer and he loves when people ask him to use it because he doesn't get to use it. Yeah, but twice all a the year. Time. Yeah. Yeah. So so think about stuff like that. Get together with your friends and talk about that kind of stuff. Things that you can borrow. You don't have to own something to utilize it. What are the things that I can lend? What are the things that I can borrow? So that we can lower our consumption rate and lower our waste. And hopefully peter out the need, the growing need for landfills. Yes. Number eight, I'm going to go with this, even though we're talking about no cost, but we all do spend money. So re-highlighting this idea of spending with purpose, being a conscious consumer, making sure that the money we do spend has been thought about, is intentional, is going to keep things out of the landfill rather than add to it. That again, also just helps our wallet. But I also like how they are advocating for some of these new credit cards that are popping up on the market that are focused on funding causes. They reference that there's this aspiration zero card. But these are debit cards. They're not even credit cards. So if you don't want a credit card, these are debits. It plants a tree for every single purchase you make, mm-hmm. which seems insane. So there you go. There's your no cost. If you're just already spending money and then this is just like no cost to you, to actually be doing good with your purchases. And the card gives you 1% cash back for your purchases. Mm-hmm. We're not, there's no sponsorship here. I'm just yeah. reading this article. No, Aspiration but might have a credit card too, but they also have a debit card that does pretty much the same thing. Is, that's a really cool additional way of spending with purpose, not just conscious consumerism, but figuring out how my spending can go further in utilizing resources like these debit and credit cards that are also on team sustainability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this climate first bank, I'm going to piggyback. My third is also going to be number eight because I love this climate first bank, which is another eco-driven debit card that recently announced a -a one-of-a-kind regeneration checking account, which for every qualifying regeneration account open, Climate First makes a $100 donation to Project Regeneration 
Regeneration. So it's a nonprofit focused on ending the climate crisis. So there are a ton of ways where you can go further. I really believe that credit unions, using credit unions for most of your banking really reinvests in the community. That in itself is sustainable. Not everything has, like not all sustainability has to do with with the climate, but it can also be, you know, sustainability and keeping money local. But these banks also are very climate driven. And there's all kinds of ESG funds coming in, you know, to your IRA or your 401k. There are definitely ways to not spend extra, but spend money you were already going to spend, whether that's, you know, on mm-hmm. regular stuff or investments, whatever, they can have like an added, this can go a little bit further. Yes. I love that. That automating yeah. <laughs> generosity too can yes. be awesome. They also reference ways to be engaged in advocacy efforts and volunteerism. So these are obviously free ways, but then they also become activities and they get us involved in the community and meeting other like-minded people. So there's so much that can be done here that doesn't involve us spending more money just to become more eco-friendly and sustainable. Yeah, like you- most of the efforts are not spending money. Yeah, we've said this from day one. You cannot buy your way to green. And many climate activists will say the same thing. You cannot buy your way to green. It's a marketing tool. So, And when you know that, then, then you can take this more radical middle approach of not having to be perfect, but just desiring to be better. Do you know what else can't be purchased, but is just getting better and better Mm -hmm. always automatically, organically? I would never say do better, but it's always becoming better. (gasps) The The Bill Bill of the Week. That's right. It's time for the best minute of your entire week. Maybe a baby was born and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, Buffalo bills, Bill Clinton. This is the Bill of the Week. Hey, Jen and Jill. Uh, My Bill of the Week was my phone bill. I messaged our carrier, our data carrier, about getting a lower rate because they were advertising a lower rate to new customers. And we've been with them for almost nine years. So I negotiated with them and got $20 off every month as a loyalty discount. So now we're going to be saving $240 every year just by negotiating and talking with them. So yeah, thank you. Nice. I love this. I Mm. love these examples of a simple phone call negotiation station and getting a lower monthly payment this we're not talking a Mm one-time discount which i'm also here for those are great but when we can reduce monthly expenses because you made one phone call that's amazing kayla well done Yes. Congratulations, Kayla. The phone bill we found, phone and internet, if you have complete competing internet providers, but always the phone bill, easiest one to lower. Mm -hmm. Honestly, Mm -hmm. easiest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, gosh, give them a call or switch providers. I mean, there's enough providers. Kayla did it. So can you. (laughs) Yes. Oh, well, if you all are listening and you also lowered a bill regularly or you got a discount one time on something or, you know, anything else Your just name is vaguely bill. related to being bill, <laughs> visit frugalfriendspodcast.com slash bill. Leave us your bill. Be a bill. All about them bills. Discover the heartwarming and hilarious world of sibling connections on Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson. You might be asking yourself, what is Sibling Revelry? Yeah, well, we just made it up. They'll have some laughs and maybe inspire some people along the way with universal tales of what it's like to grow up with brothers and sisters. We're full blood siblings, the only full blood sibling. In our family, well, not in the world. 
I mean, no, in the whole in world. The- <laughs> That's just it. Like, no one. Dive into family tales and explore the human mind with guests like Joel and Benji Madden. And it's fun because we've decided to open it up, you know, to really like all kinds of different siblings. And it's going to be a- an awesome season. It's more than a podcast. It's a celebration of the ties that bind us. Listen to Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. From the studio who brought you the number one podcast, The Piketon Massacre, this is Murder 101. A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. Those murders happened in the mid-1980s. He's out there doing stuff. He just didn't stop. Everything that the students predicted through their profile turned out to be accurate. Redhead killer profile. Male, Caucasian, 5'9 to 6'2, 180 to 270 pounds. Unstable home, absent father and a domineering mother. Right-handed, IQ above 100, most likely heterosexual. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. Just because some of these women no longer have people to speak for them does not mean that they deserve to not be spoken for. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? I said, are you going to kill me? And he said, yes. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And now it's time for the lightning round. All right. So we know you guys love hacks. Mm. So today's question, what is your favorite free eco-friendly hack? Mm. Jill, I love yours. Can you go first? I don't know if it's a hack. I mean, there's, there's a lot of pressure that goes along with the word hack. Yeah. But I love composting. You do love composting. It, honestly, I guess now that I say it, it does feel like a hack. And the more that I've gotten into composting, like it feels like a hack to reducing waste because I am getting rid of stuff. I'm consuming and like throwing away. But instead of throwing it into the trash that goes to the landfill, I am throwing it into a compost bin that gets turned into gold, gardener's gold Mm -hmm. that helps my veggies. Thus saving money on taxes and landfills in the future. Yeah. And saving money on needing to buy like the expensive soil that's full of all the nutrients. I'm making it myself. And the deeper I've gotten into the world of (laughs) composting. She is in deep. Well, I mean, I'm not that deep. Like, don't don't try and like DM me with like the dark web of composting because I'm not there yet. (laughs) I'm just like, I'm I'm at 102. Dirt web. There's 101 and I'm at 102. But I'm learning how much can be composted. I think before I did this, I had no clue. And now it's dryer lint. It's some cardboard. It's certain types of paper products. It's my coffee filters. Like, Ev- so much. And so I am now at the point where I confuse my guests because my recycling bin is larger than my trash can. I literally have one of those very tiny, like goes in the bathroom types of trash cans for all of my trash. She does. Which I then had to label because all of my guests were yeah. throwing things out into the recycling bin. I'm like, ah, shoot. I, was I didn't confused. identify that soon enough for people. And they're like, this is weird. I'm like, I'm on a low waste journey. <laughs> and they like learn more about me than they bargained for. Me. But I'm, on a I'm able to do that because I compost. And again, I'm getting rid of stuff. It just is in like the best way where it rots and it turns into great material. It feels like a hack. I love it. I, I do love composting. We are not composting right now, but it is such a satisfying feeling to turn garbage into dirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I also love the ritual of walking out to my compost bin. Like I don't love it if it's like 10 p.m. and my compost bin is full and it's raining outside. But most days when I take my compost bin from the kitchen and I dump it into, you know, my like actual, actual compost bin outside, it's a really nice ritual. It draws me out to my garden regularly. And that's great. It's great Mm -hmm. for the soul. That's beautiful. Thanks, Jen. What about you? What's your hack? Hack. Um, So I have gotten away from Facebook, but I do 
I can still go to Facebook Marketplace. And so there are people that will post things for free on Facebook Marketplace. And so that is the hack that we have been using most recently. I don't have to babysit it. I can maybe get a notification if it's something I need. Honestly, I'm not the one doing it. It's mostly Travis. He's the one that does it. But I do love some of the stuff that we have been able to acquire, some of the needs we've been able to meet for free because of Facebook Marketplace. And not a lot of people are there for the free part of it. So it feels like a hack. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that is, that's mine right now. Yeah. You've done so well. You were just, we love when, when I visit Jen's house, I get updates on her renovation progress. And when she visits my house, she Mm -hmm. tours my updates and you've always got something really great that coincides with your aesthetic. I think sometimes there can be this idea that if I'm getting it for free for my home, then my home's just going to be this hodgepodge of, of items that are kind of dented and bruised and broken and nothing matches. But reality is is people are giving away their gently used, very beautiful items for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. And you can benefit from that. Like your, your things are not a hodgepodge. They all... And that comes with, you know, the the practice and curating and being patient and keeping an eye out. But you found some really great stuff that has reduced the cost of your renovations and has reduced waste. Mm. Love that. Yes. Yeah. So we, we hope that in this first episode of February, we have inspired you to make some free changes to to be a little more eco-friendly for the year to come. So thank you so much for listening. We love reading your kind reviews too. So we're going to take a break from member wins Mm. from Frugal Friends Club and share this one from Bella Niente. Mm. Mm. Bella Niente, maybe. It's it's a night. I like this name. It just happens to be five stars. And uh, she she titles it, The Life Coaches I'm Too Cheap to Pay For. <laughs> we don't use the C word, but we, I am yeah. here for that. Yes. And I don't know if <laughs> anyone's ever referenced me as a life coach. No. <laughs> uh, Jen and Jill's podcast is helpful for everyday life, making finances down to earth. I appreciate the very easy to implement ideas from inexpensive plants to spruce up your yard to grocery ideas. So often there frugal ideas from swapping to skimping are also the sustainable choice. And I love that. <sighs> Bel and Yente, mm. I love all of your alliteration. Swapping, skimping, sustainable. I mean, we're not here for deprivation, but we are here for wise, conscious decisions. Yes. Yeah, so and thank- it sounds like you are too. Thank you. And we are so thankful to have you as a listener. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to leave a rating and review. It helps potential new listeners know what our show is all about, know what they're getting into. So if they're here for a different type of frugality, they can try something else. Mm-hmm. They are. They don't have to waste their time, an hour of their time. Or maybe they might want to after they read these really great <laughs> reviews. Maybe they need a life coach. Yes. And Oh, I don't want to overpromise anything. <laughs> don't overpromise anything. Oh. We might kind of give you something that's useful. See you next time. Bye. Frugal Friends is produced by Eric Siriani. Oh, I went to my compost bin the other day and found some things sprouting. I went like I, I attended to my <laughs> my compost and I met the other day in secret. I went to my secret garden. My secret place, the compost. And in the dark, which is where seeds sprout. Oh, there's so many beautiful life metaphors that happen in the garden. There's your life coaching. Seeds, well, I Be mean, they just call it therapy Be where dirt. I come from, but that's right. Uh, <laughs> be, be like dirt. 
seeds need the darkness to germinate. Most seeds germinate in the dead. It's like dark, people. people and then they reach their out sleep for the for the germinate. light and the sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> what? I can't skip past what you just said. The pregnant one over here is telling us how life works. It's uh no, you heal when you sleep. Your body oh, works. Oh, that's what you mean. You I thought sleep. you were talking about procreation for oh, humans and like you oh, should, oh my I gosh. hope you were awake. I yeah, that's illegal. If you were asleep when that happened, don't take that. But if you're trying to heal or something, a lo- your body does a lot of work when you're sleeping. Yeah. So and there then were... reaches out for the morning sun reluctantly. <laughs> no, full of hope. Full Not of hope reluctant. reluctantly. I don't know how you wake up. But there are seeds <laughs> sprouting in my compost. I'm like, ah, should I pull them out? What's trying to grow? But instead, I just dump more compost on top of it. <laughs> Oh, look we'll at that beautiful! Happens. Look at that beautiful little baby seed. <laughs> 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 It will never live. And maybe it will. Maybe more will happen. We shall see. That's beautiful, Jill. That's a beautiful uh, life <laughs> metaphor lesson. Wow. I mean, we really should be charging for the, this life coaching. Life coaching right? that's happening. Yeah. Maybe we'll add that to our I charge offerings. for counseling and it's way more than I could charge for podcasting. So I think I'll <laughs> stick with that. Well, I'm not a counselor, so... Follow, so follow follow Jen for more life coaching for, for discount life coaching for free. Yeah. It's called the podcast. <laughs> Look it up. Discover the heartwarming and hilarious world of sibling connections on Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson. Dive into family tales, explore the human mind, and laugh with guests like Joel and Benji Madden. It's more than a podcast; it's a celebration of the ties that bind us. And it's fun because we've decided to open it up to really like all kinds of different siblings and it's going to be a, an awesome season listen to sibling revelry with kate hudson and oliver hudson on the iHeartRadio app apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts i'm jacob goldstein i used to host planet money now i'm starting a new show it's called what's your problem every week on what's your problem entrepreneurs and engineers describe the future they're going to build once they solve a few problems I'm talking to people trying to figure out how to do things that no one on the planet knows how to do, from creating a drone delivery business to building a car that can truly drive itself. Listen to What's Your Problem on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts.